Hi everyone, this is Sahiti on behalf of Edureka and I welcome you to this session on MySQL Workbench tutorial. So in the session on MySQL Workbench tutorial, you will get an understanding of the different functionalities and the features of this powerful database management tool, right? So let's just get started with this session. So what do you think MySQL Workbench is? Well, MySQL Workbench is a graphics tool for working with the MySQL servers and the databases. So basically, it's a really powerful tool which enables us to visualize modules for creating, executing, and optimizing several queries, also for designing, modeling, and generating databases, and also for configuring servers, administrating users, and viewing the database health, right? So let me just open the dashboard and show you. All right, so when you download your MySQL Workbench, this is what you see. So basically, this is how the MySQL Workbench looks like when you have to start with it. Don't worry guys, I'll tell you what exactly all the options of this workbench mean, how do they work and how you can use this workbench to make your work easier, right? So before I get into the depth of these functionalities and the features of the MySQL workbench, let me tell you that, you know, the MySQL workbench is available for the Microsoft Windows, Linux, and also Mac OS on 32-bit and 64-bit systems. So you can download from here. So let me just open that. So you can download the MySQL workbench from here. So as I mentioned before, it's available for the Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and also the other operating systems for the 32-bit and the 64-bit systems, right? So you just have to click on this go to download page, or you can also choose other downloads. Since if you don't have an ID on MySQL, then that's not a problem because you can just directly download this, right? Now, before you start using MySQL Workbench, just remember one thing. You need MySQL to be installed on your local machine. Only then you can start using the MySQL Workbench. Now, talking about MySQL Workbench, there are obviously various functionalities that this tool provides. So those are basically the SQL development, the data modeling, the server administration, the data migration, and the MySQL enterprise support. So when it comes to the SQL development, this basically enables you to create and manage the connections to the database servers. So along with enabling you to configure the connection parameters, the MySQL Workbench provides the capability to execute the SQL queries on the database connections using the built-in SQL editor, right? So we're going to see that, you know, when we open our MySQL Workbench and start looking into the functionalities. Now moving on to data modeling. Data modeling basically enables you to create models of your database schema graphically and also allows you to perform the reverse and the forward engineering between the schema and the live databases. Not only this, but you can also edit all the aspects of your database using the comprehensive table editor, which provides the easy to use facilities for editing tables, columns, indexes, triggers, partitioning, options, inserts, privileges, routines, and views, right? So that's how you know you can model the data. Now moving on to server administration. This functionality basically enables you to administer your MySQL server instances by administering users, performing backup and recovery, inspecting audit data, viewing the database health, and also monitoring the MySQL server performance. Moving on to the next functionality, that is the data migration. As the name suggests, this allows you to migrate from the Microsoft SQL Server, Microsoft Access, Sybase, ASCs, SQLite, SQL Anywhere, Postgres SQL, and other relational database management system tables, objects, and data to the MySQL. So let me tell you one thing over here that the migration also supports migrating from the earlier versions of MySQL to the latest releases, right? Now, moving on to the last functionality that is basically your MySQL Enterprise Support. This basically provides the support for the enterprise products such as the MySQL Enterprise Backup, MySQL Firewall, and MySQL Audit. So guys, I hope that you know the functionalities of the workbench are clear to you guys. These are basically the SQL development, the data modeling, the server administration, the data migration, and the MySQL Enterprise support. Now, apart from the functionalities, let me mention over here that you know there are basically three types of additions in Workbench. That is basically the community edition, the standard edition, and the enterprise edition. So the community edition is freely available from the MySQL official website, and the standard edition is basically a commercial version that builds on the community edition by adding enterprise features such as the schema and model validation and the generation of database models. And lastly, coming to the enterprise edition, this also provides a lot of features that the community edition does not provide, right? So let me just open the official website and show you the various features that these editions provide. So as you can see on the screen, basically, you know, these are the various features that the editions provide. 
that is basically the visual SQL development, the visual database administration, the performance tuning, the user and the session management, the connection management, the object management, the data management, the visual data modeling, reverse engineering, forward engineering, schema synchronization, schema and model validation, the DB dog, the GUI for MySQL Enterprise Audit, GUI for MySQL Enterprise Firewall, scripting and plugins, database migrations, right? Now, out of all these features, there are few features which are not provided by the community edition and are provided by the standard edition and the enterprise edition. But yes, there are also many other features which are not provided by the standard edition also. So if you scroll down over here, you'll see that, you know, the schema and the model validation, the DB doc is basically not provided by the community edition. Coming to the GUI for MySQL Enterprise Backup, the GUI for MySQL Enterprise Audit, and the GUI for MySQL Enterprise Firewall are not provided by the Community Edition or the Standard Edition. So these are basically provided by the Enterprise Edition. So since this session mainly aims to teach you how to use Workbench and how you can play around with the various functionalities and make it easy to use, we're going to use the Community Edition. So the Community Edition provides all these features that I just mentioned. So don't worry, we'll be looking at them one by one. All right, so now that you've understood the various editions of MySQL Workbench, let's move on to the next topic that is basically the three modules of Workbench. So the three modules of Workbench are the SQL development, the data modeling, and the migration wizard. So the SQL development basically consists of all the query editors where you can write queries, create databases, and also perform server administration tasks, such as, you know, you can monitor and configure your database. Moving on to data modeling. Data modeling is basically used to model your data. So you can create your ER diagrams. You can also perform forward engineering and the reverse engineering. And finally, coming to the third module, that is the migration wizard. So you can migrate data of a database from a connection to another database or, you know, another connection. Or you can also perform the other tasks such as manual editing, target creation option. You can also create schemas over here. And you can finally get a migration report. So guys, these were the various modules of Workbench. So let's get started with the first module that is the SQL development. So when you open your MySQL Workbench, you'll see that, you know, this is your first screen that you see. So everything starts from this home tab. So over here we have basically the three modules that I just mentioned. This is the SQL development. This is the data modeling module and this is migration wizard. All right. So to start around with the SQL development, what you have to basically do is you have to add a new connection. So when I say you have to add a new connection, so basically you have to create a new connection to a server instance, or you can also use this existing one in the Windows Workbench, which is detected if you've got MySQL on your local machine. So let's just create new connections first. So to create a new connection, you have to go to this plus sign over here. That is basically to add a new connection. So I'll just click on that. Okay, so over here in the dialog box that opens up, you have to mention the connection name, the connection method, the host name, the port number, the username, the password, which can be stored in world, and the default schema, right? So let's say, you know, I mentioned the connection's name to be Edureka. So I'll just type in that. And let's say the connection method to stand the same, that is TCP IP, the host name to be standing same, the port number to be 3306. Let's say the username is root, and let's say we store the password in world. So let me just type in my password. Then over here you can see that you know the password has been stored. So while setting the passwords, there are basically two options. Either you store it over here or it will be requested later if it's not set, right? Since I've stored it over here, then I won't be requested in the later part. Now moving on to the last option, that is basically the default schema. So basically for the connection that you're creating, you can set up a default schema. So any queries or any scripts that you run will be completely based on the default schema that you set, right? Now over here, I'm not mentioning any default schema. Now once that is done, you can just click on OK, right? So you can see that, you know, your connection has been created. Now let me just open this connection again to show you the advanced options. All right, so what I'll do for that is I'll just right click on this connection and choose the edit connection option. So once you choose the edit connection option, you can see that, you know, your basic details that you've mentioned have been stored over here. Now after that you can go to the remote management where you know you can choose if you want to use the remote management or not and you can also mention the system profile right so that's how you can play around with the connections now you know if you want to add a new connection you can simply choose this option new and then you can mention the connections name so let's say you know we mentioned in test and let's say our connection method is again the same the port number and the host names stand the same 
and let's say the username, the password and the default schema stands the same, right? So once you're done with that, you can just, you know, choose this option test connection. Once you click on the option test connection, you'll see that a dialog box comes up with say successfully made the MySQL connection, right? So you just click on OK after that. So once you click on OK and close it, you'll see that, you know, a test connection has also been created. Now the manage connections option that you saw while you right click over here and choose the edit option can also be opened with the setting symbol that you see over here. So if you just click on this, you'll see that you know you go back to the manage servers connections dialog box where you can add new connections or you can delete new connections or you can even duplicate the connections, right? So that was about the connections guys. Now let me just open the connections that I've created. So let me just double click on this connection. And you'll see that you know once you double click on your connection. This is the particular view of the dashboard that you get right. So guys, this was the view that you just saw right. So now over here there are basically different panes that you have to understand in the dashboard. So starting with the navigator pane navigator pane basically gives you all the options for the performance for the list of schemas that you have and also the information about the tables and the columns presented that schema the server status the client connections and all those options right. Next moving on to the output pane. The output pane basically gives you the output of whatever query that you run. So once you run any query, you'll see that you know your output has been printed over here. So you'll see that when we do the hands on part now moving on to the next pane that is basically the snippets pane. The snippets panes is basically used to add your own code snippets and then you know you can hide those snippets or you can re execute those snippets. And you can perform actions like you know you, you can re execute your code snippets or you know you can delete your code snippets specifically and so on right. And moving on to the last pane that is basically a query pane. This is the pane you know where you'll be writing all the queries that you want to get executed. So let me just quickly jump back to our SQL workbench and let me show you how that's happening. So this is basically the screen that I showed you. So as I said before, this is the navigator pane. This is the output pane. This is the snippet pane and this is the query pane, right? So now before I get into you know how you use these panes and all, let me tell you one feature that you can observe on the top right hand side over here. That is basically that you know you can hide these panes. So let's say I want to hide the navigator pane. Then you choose this option and you'll see that you know your navigator pane has been hidden. Similarly, if you want to, you know, hide the output pane and also the snippets pane, then you can choose this particular option and this particular option. So in such a way, you get a clear view of your query pane, right? So that's how you know you can hide these panes. So let me just go back and get these panes back. All right. Now let's get started. So now what we're going to basically do is we're going to choose our default database. So for that what I'll do is I'll just choose this particular database. I'll right click on this database and then I'll choose the option set as default schema. So what will happen is whatever queries that I write in this particular query pane will be executed with respect to this particular database, right? So let me just write any particular query. Let's say you know I create a new table, right? So I'll type in create table. Let's say you know I mentioned the table's name to be department, right? So I'll just type in department. So let's say I have the column name D name of varcat type 20 characters, right? So after that, I'll just close this particular query. And then if I want to execute this particular query, what I'll simply do is I'll just go to this query pane and choose this option execute, right? Once you choose this option execute, you see that you know your query has been executed and you see the output in the outputs pane, right? So that's how you know you can execute. Now if you want to use the keyboard shortcuts, then you can just check them out over here. So to execute all the statements that you mentioned in the query pane. So basically when I say all the statements, I mean that in a single query pane, you can have hundreds of statements, right? So let's say I just mentioned few statements. All right, so as you can see over here, I've mentioned a lot of queries in the query pane. So if you want to execute all these particular queries, you can just go to the query tab and choose control shift enter. So what basically will happen is all the queries present in the query pane will get executed as if you just want to you know execute any one particular query. You just have to select this particular query and then you can just you know go to this toolbar option and you can click on this particular option. So once you click on this particular option, you'll see that you know your query has been executed. Now similarly you can execute this particular statement with the keyboard shortcut that is control enter. So when I press on control enter you can see that you know my query has got executed right. 
So let me just execute this particular query also. So that's how you know you can execute queries. All right. Now, since you know we've created around four tables in the company database, let's go back to our navigators pane over here and let's just click on this company database, right? So under this tables option, you'll see that in our employee table has been created. So when you go to this company's database and you go to the tables option and then you go to the tables under it, you see only the employee table, right? But once you refresh this, so I'm just refreshing it. You see that you know the department locations, the department, the project, and the works on tables have also got created, right? So the navigator pane basically has all the information about the database. So if you just double click on the schema, you'll see in the information tab that you know the schema name is company. But yes, if you go to the tables option and let's say I choose the department locations, right? So when I choose this department's location, you'll clearly see that the columns that the tables have been mentioned with their data type. And also if they're the primary key or the foreign key, right? So let's just go to the columns tab over here and let's choose a column over here. So you'll clearly see that, you know, the column name has been mentioned and also its definition by definition. I mean the data type and if it's a primary key or a foreign key or if it's a normal key, right? So all that information can be found out from the navigators pane. All right. Now one more important feature that I'd like to mention over here is generating the create table. So when I say generating the create table, it's not necessary that you know we write queries to create new tables or create new columns. We can directly do it from the navigator pane. So let's say I want to create a new table for this particular schema, right? So what I'll just simply do is I'll go to the tables option. I'll right click here. I'll choose the option create table and then you can see that you know we've been redirected to this particular pane. So let me just hide the other pane so that we have a clear view of it. So let's say I mentioned a table's name to be dependent. And then let's say we start adding columns, right? So let's say I add a new column which says dependent name. Let it to be of varchar types. And let's say around 15 characters. And let's say, you know, we want it to be primary key. We don't want it to be not null. All right. We can also choose the other options, you know, whether it should be a primary key or it should not be null or it can have a unique index, a binary value, an unsigned value, a zero fill, an auto increment and also a generated column, right? So that's how you know you can check in this boxes as you wish so. So over here I've mentioned that it should be primary key and it should not be null, right? So now once you're done with that, you can also choose the foreign keys, triggers and indexes also. So now I'm not going to do all that stuff. So I'm simply going to create this particular table. So once you mention all the column names that you wish, you can just click on this option apply over here. So once you click on this option apply, you see that a script has been generated to create a new table, right? So you just click on apply and then you can see that you get an output that, you know, all these SQL statements have got executed, right? So just click on finish and this wizard will close and let's now just refresh this. So let me just refresh this particular section and you'll see that you know our dependent table has been created with the column name dependent name, right? So that's how you have an option of creating tables also like that. Now coming back to the query pane. Now suppose you know you have a query which does not end in a single line, right? So let's say you know we change this particular query to a single line. All right. Now suppose if we want this particular query in a formatted way, what we can simply do is you just have to click on this format option and that will beautify our SQL statement, right? So that's how you know you can use the format option. Suppose you want to zoom in and you want to play with your preferences. So what you can simply do is you go to edit, you go to preferences, you go to fonts and colors and let's say I want to zoom in, right? So what I'll simply do is I'll change this to 12 and let me change the scripting shell also to 12 and editor also to 12, right? I'll just click on OK. Now once I click on OK, I have to restart my workbench. So let me just do that, right? When you restart your workbench, you can see that, you know, your query editor has been zoomed in. Similarly, would have the script editor and also the result script. So guys, that was about the navigator pane and the information pane that you have. Now moving on to the output pane, the output pane, as I mentioned before, gives you all the output and you saw that, you know, the output pane is used to see the output. But yes, there's one more functionality over here. So let me just write a new query. All right. So, you know, I have this particular query, right? So when I execute this particular query, you see an output that, you know, this particular values have been inserted into the project table. Now, when you right click on this particular response, you see various options such as copy row, copy action, copy response, copy duration, and also append selected items to SQL script, replace, and clear, right? 
So you can simply use all these particular options. So let's say you now want to copy the response. So I'll just copy this response and you can see that you know my response can be pasted over here, right? So that's how you know you can keep a track of all the output that you have. Now one more thing over here is you can see the output in the results grid, right? So to see the results grid, let's just insert a new value. So let me just change the values over here. And then you know, let's just execute this particular query. And then you know what you can do is you can simply you know select this particular query and then you can choose this particular option. So with this particular option you get the results grid. So let's just click on this particular option in the toolbar. And when you click on this option you see a pane which shows the results grid and the execution plan, right? The execution plan is basically how the query is getting executed. So you can understand the execution plan as a map or as a roadmap to how the query is getting executed and the results grid shows the results. So since you know it's an insert statement, you cannot see the values to be inserted. All right, so let's just view all the values that we've inserted into the project table. So for that, we'll just type in select star from project. That is basically my table's name. And let's just execute this particular query. So I'll select this query. I'll choose this option and then I'll go to the results grid. So when you go to the results grid, you see all the values that we've inserted into this particular query. Now one more interesting feature that I like to mention is that you can filter your rows. So let's say you want to filter your rows according to department number five, right? And then you refresh this. You see that, you know, you get the tuples in the table with the department number five, or you can say what we have mentioned five, right? Now, not only this, but you can also edit the table data. So what you can simply do is you just have to click on the table and then you choose the tuple or the value that you want to change, right? So let's say, you know, I want to change the product Y to product A. And let's say the product number is changed to four and let the location and the DNUM be same, right? So that's how you know you can edit the table data also. Not only this, but you can also add and delete the rows. So let's say, you know, we want to add a row. So I'll just click on this option of insert new row and you'll see that, you know, a new row will be added. Similarly, we can remove that particular row also. You can also import and export your table, right? So that's how, you know, you can play around with this. Now, one more thing that I like to mention over here is that you can also edit the table from the navigator's pane, right? So let me just go back to the navigator's pane. Let's say I want to edit the table project. So what I'll basically do is I'll just right click over here and then I'll choose the option that I want to choose. So I can either create a new table or you know, I can drop this particular table. I can truncate this particular table or I can select specific rows and so on, right? Now going back to our last pane that is basically a snippet pane. So you can basically add code snippets. So, you know, when I choose this option of my snippets, I initially have no snippets over here, right? So now suppose if I want to add a snippet that is basically my own snippet. All right, so I've mentioned few queries over here. So what I can simply do is I go to my snippets pane. I right click over here. I choose the add snippet from the editor content option. And then I mention all those queries that I want to be added, right? So I'll choose all this option and I'll paste it over here. So you see that, you know, these three queries have been added on to our snippet. Now, once that is done, I'll choose done. So this will be basically stored as my snippet. So whenever I choose to execute this statement, I can just go to this particular snippet. I can right click over here. Then I can either execute this particular snippet or I can edit this particular snippet or even I can delete this particular snippet, right? So what I'll simply do is I'll just execute this particular snippet. So you'll see that, you know, your snippet has been executed. And let me show you in the output pane that you know our output has come, right? So that's how you know you can use this particular snippet. Now, let's say if you want to re execute this. Since it's an insert statement, it won't get re executed since it will show you an error. But yes, if you had any other particular statement, so what you simply would do is you can just execute this particular snippet in the middle of nowhere, right? So that was about snippet. Now, in the snippets pane, you have various options. That is basically the database management, the SQL DDL, the SQL DML, and the shared snippets. So, moving to the database management, this basically consists of all those commands which are used to basically create your database. So, let's say I want to use this particular snippet. What I'll simply do is I'll just right click over here, I'll choose copy snippet to clipboard, and then I'll paste it over here. Now simply what you can do is you can just mention your database. So let's say, you know, I want to create a database and I want it to be shown, right? So what I'll do is I'll just type the database name and then I'll execute this. So when you see the DDL statements, you see that, you know, you get all the syntax of all these particular statements that we use for data definition. Similar is the case with the data manipulation and also the shared ones, right? 
Now, when it comes to data manipulation, and let's say I want to choose this particular syntax, I have either three options. I can either replace the current text by this snippet. So suppose I have this as the current text, right? So I can just replace it with that. Or I can also insert the snippet text at the current position. If I want to insert the snippet text at the current position, so basically that's the position that I have over here in my editor. And also I can copy the snippet text to the clipboard, right? So that was about the snippet pane, guys. Now, before I move on to the next module of MySQL Workbench, let me just go through all the options that you have over here. So in the file option, you have options for creating new models, new query tabs, open model, open SQL script, run SQL script, and so on. From the editors tab, you have the undo paste and basically the preferences where you can you know zoom in and zoom out that I showed you. And also mention all the basic preferences that you want for your MySQL workbench. Similarly for the view, you can choose what kind of view that you want for your MySQL workbench, which pane that you want to hide or which pane that you want to use and what are the different panels and coming to the query tab. The query tab basically gives you option to execute the queries also gives you other options such as limiting number of rows in a specific query pane and also collecting the performance schema stats. The database option gives you all the options to connect to a database, manage, reverse engineering, schema, migration wizard, and so on. The server option gives you all the options such as data export, data import. That is basically from where you can export and import your data. You can view your performance reports, the schema setups, the dashboards, the accessing systems. And similarly for tools, we have various utilities such as you can copy the particular code in the query pane as a PHP code, or you know, we can just iterate the select results. In the scripting option, you can just choose to have a new script or you can open an existing script. And in the help option, you just have all the documentation files where you can find the help for this workbench, right? So now that you've understood the SQL development module, it's time that you know we jump on to our next module that is basically our data modeling. So as I mentioned before, the data modeling module is basically used to design your databases. So this lets you work with enhanced entity relationship models. So you can create a new model or you can also create a model of an existing database by reverse engineering or data modeling also allows you to export your schema design to a MySQL server. Let me just shift back to my MySQL workbench and show you how that's done. So we'll just go back to the home tab over here and then I'll choose this option of data modeling. So once I choose this option of data modeling, I get three options. That is basically to add a new model or you know to save this particular model that you have chosen. Or you can create an ER model from a database or create an ER model from script, right? So let's say we want to add a new model. So for that, I'll just click on this option add and you'll be redirected to this particular dashboard of data modeling. All right. So this is the dashboard that you see when you open your data modeling module. Now, suppose if you want to perform the reverse engineering. So when I say by reverse engineering, what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to use an existing database and then I'm going to create the model out of it, right? So for that, I'll go to this database option. I'll choose the option of reverse engineer and then I'll mention the stored connections name, the connection method and host name, port name, port number, the username and password. So let's say I choose the stored connection to be a Eureka and then the connections method, the host name, the port number, the username and the password is stored. Now once I'm done with that, I'll click on next and then you can see that our task has been executed. So that's basically we are connected to the database the schema list has been retrieved and also the common server configuration issues have been checked, right? So once you're done with that, you just have to click on next and then you can choose the schemas that you want to include in your ER diagram. So over here, I just want to include the Sakila schema. So I'll just choose that and then I'll click on next. So once you click on next, you'll see that, you know, your objects have been retrieved from the selected schema and then your results can be checked, right? So once you get this confirmation that the retrieval is completed successfully, you can just click on next and then you'll see that, you know, the objects to be reverse engineered can be chosen. So we are by default. Everything will be chosen unless you mention what has to be chosen or not, right? So I'm just going to go by default and then I'll choose the option execute. So once you press on execute, you see that, you know, your diagram has been created. Your reverse engineer selected objects have been chosen and then you can just click on next to finish the reverse engineering. When you click on next, you see the output that you know the summary of the reverse engineer objects has been mentioned and then you just click on finish. So once you click on finish, you see that this is how your complete ER diagram looks like. So that's because we are already using an existing database and we've just reverse engineered it. So what we have basically done is we have just used that particular database information and then we've created the model automatically out of it. 
right? So over here you can see that you know it's a really big diagram. So you can use this bird eyes view to drag the viewport around the diagram and see whatever detail that you want, or you can also zoom in, right? So let me just zoom out. So you see that you know this is a complete diagram. So let's just zoom in over here and then let's use the bird eyes view to drag. So I'm going to drag and look into all the details. So over here you can clearly see what entities or what details are grouped together and what details are connected to each other, right? Now one more interesting thing that you can do over here is that you know you can color your object. Now suppose you know if you want to change the color of any particular object. Let's say I want to change the color of the staff object. So what I'll simply do is I'll just choose this particular object. I'll go to the properties editor and then you can see a color, right? So what I can do is I can just double click over here and you get all the options. So let's say I change it to this particular color and then I'll click on OK. So you'll see that you know this particular object's color has been changed. So that's how you know you can make it stand out from the group. Not only this, but you know when you see your MySQL model, you have two particular databases. That is basically the initial database that we saw and the circular database that we reverse engineered, right? So let's just remove this particular part. So I'll just delete. And now you'll see that you know we only have our Sakila's database, right? Not only this, but you can also arrange your model as you want. So, so for that, you just go to this arrange option, and then you can choose the options such as bring to front, send to back, send to diagram contents, expand all, collapse all. So when I say collapse all, you see that you know everything is just vanished, right? So let's just undo that. All right. Not only this, but you can also edit the values in your tables. So let's say you know I want to edit the values present in this particular table that is inventory, right? So what I'll simply do is I'll right click here. I'll go to edit inventory and then let's say you know we want to change this. So let's say you know we have our inventory ID to be medium int, right? So let's say we change it to small int. And then let's just apply this particular thing. So that's how you know you can change the values in the table also. Well guys, this is not an end to all the features of data modeling. You have various features that you can see on the left hand side, right? So that is basically to move the model. You can erase something. You can place a new layer or you can, you know, place a new image. You can change the cardinality ratios between all the tables. Not only this, but you can also modify and format your tables in such a way that, you know, you have views to yourself. Suppose, you know, if I don't want to see this complete view of the interrelation between all the tables in the database and I just want to see a subset of the objects. What I can simply do is I'll go back to my MySQL model and then I'll add a new diagram. But before that, let me tell you that you can rename, export, or delete this particular diagram. So let's just rename it to Sakila EER and then I'll click on OK. This particular diagram has been renamed. Now let me just add a new diagram so that you understand how we can see the subset of objects. I'll double click over here and then I'll go to the Sakila database. That is basically the database I've been using. I'll go to tables and let's see, you know, we choose address, right? So I'll just drag and drop over here. Now, similarly, address has city, address has a customer, address is related to a country also because country is important in address, right? So this is how automatically you can group the subset of objects. So now you can specifically save this particular ER diagram saying that we change this name to address group. And then I'll click on OK, right? So this particular ER diagram is also safe. So, guys, this is how you know you can use the data modeling. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention over here is the forward engineering part. So, let's just quickly cover that part. So, when I say forward engineering, I mean that you know you basically export your database to the MySQL server. Let's just rename this particular database. So, I'll just edit, I'll just change the schema name to schema new data. And then I'll just rename, right? So let me just rename. So once the schema has been renamed, this clearly means that you know this particular schema is not present on the MySQL server, right? Now to export this particular database to MySQL server, you'd simply have to perform forward engineering. So for that, you go to database, you choose forward engineer, and then you mention the stored connection, the connection method, and everything else will be coming automatically, right? So once you're done with that, you click on next. And then you can just, you know, set the options for the database to be created. So I'll just leave it as it is and then I'll click on next. So once I click on next, I'll get again the objects to perform forward engineering on. By default, everything will be chosen. So let it be just that way. Well, you can obviously choose which objects you want to perform forward engineering on and then you click on next. Once you click on next, your script will be generated. 
So you can copy this particular script and then you can obviously execute on your SQL development module where you can run this particular queries, but we're just going to, you know, go to the next. So once you execute this particular script, then you just click on close and you see that you have a new database with the name Sakila new data, which contains all the objects and the relationships in the model, right? So to see the new database, you can just go back to our SQL editor. So let's just go back to that and then let's just refresh this. All right. So when you refresh this navigator pane, you see in the left hand side that your Sakila new data has been exported. So this is what forward engineering is guys. So that's how you know you can model your data. So now that you've understood the various features of data modeling, let's move on to the next topic. That is the migration wizard. This migration wizard basically looks like this. So when you open your MySQL workbench and you go to the third module, that is basically the migration wizard. You see this as your first screen, which says welcome to the MySQL workbench migration wizard. On the left hand side, you see that there are various options just so selection target selection fetch schema list and other options such as migration manual addition data transfer setup bulk data transfer and finally the migration report. So guys, let's just start migrating a database to a different connection. Let's just go back to the home tab and let me just open migration wizard. So when you open this migration wizard, you see a welcome wizard that you know welcome to my migration wizard. So as you can see on the screen, these are the various options that you have. So you can start migrating or you can open your ODBC administrator and you can also view the documentation, right? So let's just start migrating. So once I click on start migration option, I get all the options. So let me just choose my stored connection and then I'll choose the host name, the port number, the username, and then I'll click on next. Once I click on next, I'll again get the target relational database management connection parameters. And I'll just mention those and let's say, you know, I want to change it to test. So I'll just change it to test and then I'll click on next. Once I click on next, you see an output that these particular actions are just finished. Now let's just click on next again. So once you click on next, you have to choose the schemas that you want to migrate. So let's say I just want to migrate the Sakila schema, the world schema and the hello schema. So I'm going to choose the hello schema, the world schema and the Sakila schema. So once I'm done with that, I'll click on next. So you'll see that, you know, these particular actions have been checked. Now again, click on next and we can choose the objects that we want to be migrated. So by default, I'm going to choose all and then I'm going to click next. So once I click on next, you can see that, you know, the selected objects have got migrated and the SQL create statements have been generated. So let's just click on next and you can see that, you know, we can review and edit the migrated objects. So guys, that was about the data migration wizard. So now moving on to the next topic for the session that is data import and export. So, you know, to export and import the data, you just have to go to your SQL development tab and then you can just go to server. You go to export data. That is basically data export option over here. Then you choose the schema that you want to export. So let's say I want to export Sakila, right? So I'll choose the option and then I'll mention the path that is basically the directory where I want the database to be exported. Once I'm done with that, I'll just click on start export and you'll see that, you know, your export is running and will be finished soon. So once your export has been finished, you see an output that, you know, export has been completed. So let's just go to the path and let's just open this folder. You'll see that, you know, all your tables have got individually exported into files, right? So that's how, you know, you can export your data or your schema. Now, similarly, if you want to import data, what you do is you go to server, you choose data import then you mention from where do you want to import? So let's say I want to import from this particular directory and then what I'll do is I'll add a new schema. So let's just add a new schema. Let's say, you know, example and then I'll click on OK. So once I click on OK, you'll see that, you know, the target schema is example. So all the data that you want to import will be imported to this particular schema. So once you choose it, you know, the tables that you want to import, you just have to click on start import and the database would be imported, right? So these were the various functionalities and the features of MySQL Workbench. I hope that this session has helped you to get an understanding of the various features of MySQL Workbench. So guys, that's all from my side today. I hope you found this session informative. Thank you and have a great day.